Uh, in in this video, let us uh, uh, complete the implementation of the neural network. We when we discuss the uh, computations, we haven't uh, considered the bias term, or if you'd like to take the homogeneous representation, the the, the weight that is associated with the constant one attribute. Um, to introduce these two terms, we will introduce two, uh, another two a pair of uh, parameters in the implementation of the neural network. So um, do not be confused with uh, the intermediate variable b. Let us call them bias 1 for the first layer and bias 2 for the second layer. Uh, in bias 1, in each bias item, it will have the same number of uh, elements as the number of uh, output variables of that layer. So for the first layer, it takes two input and four output uh, and generates two uh, four outputs. So the bias item will have will be a four vector. And for the second layer, it has only one output. But for the sake of consistency, uh, I use this um, form of construction rather than a constant number. And we will apply, which means to um, add this bias term to each output item in the output um, uh, of the layer after the linear combination, uh, which we have done this here. And for the back propagation, um, let us. Um, <clears throat> it's it's relatively easy if uh, we have already studied how the back propagation for the. Um, for the W parameters, it's similar but easier. Um, consider if um, consider the computation of um, see, let me do this, W times oh uh, sorry X times W with a bias B one. Uh, well, the if the output has uh, Q I terms, and for each of the Q I term. Um, it has n samples, so basically there are n training samples corresponding to uh, n output, and each output has q variables. And the b1 has q elements corresponding to the q variables. And each of the elements of b1 will contribute to all the uh, corresponding elements in the output for all n values. And uh, samples. Therefore, if we know that the change in the output will have the corresponding change, will 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 result in the corresponding change in the loss function, uh, which is uh, represented as the the gradient of the loss function with respect to the output. Then we this this gradient is also an M by Q matrix, and we just need to take the sum of this, uh, the all, of all the rows of this matrix to get how the elements, individual elements in the bias term, to affect the corresponding uh, to affect the, the loss function. And therefore, uh, when we have the derivative of uh, um, the B. B represents the output of the second layer um, uh, before the nonlinear activation. So we will correspondingly have the B2 to be um, numpy dot uh, sum the B uh, along axis. Zero. I move this a bit here, so the construction is here. A lot of access zero is that because when we input um, the 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 uh, DP and correspondingly computing DB, they will be n by 1, there is a singular dimension 1. And uh, so this is axis 0, and this is axis 
1. We need to take the sum over this uh, axis. Oh, I, I, excuse me, I should have this moved here. Okay, so we have the dp as n by 1, and this one is a singular uh, dimension. So this is uh, axis 0, this is axis 1. We take the sum over axis 0, like this. Similarly, oh, similarly, we can do this for db1 using the derivative from um, from derivative a. That is num pi dot sum d a axis is uh, zero. And uh, let's uh, cache those, let's uh, store those uh, derivatives. B1, B2, B2. Okay, uh, and uh, similarly, I will, um, I will do the, 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 the corresponding uh, unit test for this uh, set of uh, derivatives. So let's call D V one and uh, just to change all the appearance in U into B one because B one is a vector rather than the matrix, so we do not need this and uh, B one dot size. Okay, and uh, the value of zero be one i so be one i change by epsilon, and we do the we check the diff what what is the difference its cost on the loss function, and correspondingly. Compute the numerical derivative and uh, v1 change it back to the original value and do the same for b2. So we do the check for b2 as well, and uh, we also we therefore uh, use the uh, we therefore uh, uh, execute the unit test for b1 and b2 and let us perform the forward and the backward in one step and for a particular x and y and then we uh, take out the analytically computed gradient with respect to b1 and b2 and we then uh, numerically compute the elements each individual elements in the gradient of b1 and b2 and we then check the this was uh, done before, and then in this uh, in this part, we check the computation we have just discussed. So let's execute this and see. Well, look, uh, it uh, it it looks numerically correct, or apparently. Is a difference of that. Okay, that looks good. Um, well, in the next, we are ready to optimize the neural network for uh, the for the data modeling task. <laughs>